Hello and welcome to another Standard Games video. Today I'm revisiting Red White Angels in Standard, a deck that I've covered a couple months ago on the official MTG Arena YouTube channel when a Lightning Helix was introduced in the format, since this was a great addition for the archetype. Now we also get to play with Archangel of Tithes, a nice reprint in Outlaws of Thunder Junction. 3-5 Flyer says as long as it's untapped, creatures cannot attack us or planeswalkers we control unless their controller pays one mana for each of those creatures. So this ability is going to be awesome when facing a deck like Boros Convoke, which wants to go wide and attack with a whole bunch of small creatures. And then if the Archangel is attacking, creatures cannot block unless their controller pays one mana for each of those creatures. That ability is less likely to be relevant, but maybe can help us attack pass an Atraxa out of the domain deck to deal those last points of damage. So Archangel of Tithes is the big new addition, and then we also get to play with Inspiring Vantage as another reprint, also good quality of life improvement for Boros decks going forward, but of course not quite as essential here as it might be in a lower curve deck, where you really want to make sure to have your untapped lands in the first couple turns. So those are the big new additions. I've also tried High Noon as a two mana enchantment in the Boros Callers, which can maybe slow down the aggressive decks, but I still found it to be a little bit too slow, especially if you start out on the draw. So I'm instead playing two copies of Sunset Revelry to help out against those aggro decks. Then we've got a full set of Lightning Helix and two copies of Temporary Lockdown. I used to play four copies of it in this deck back when Boros Convoke was the most popular deck in Best of One Standard. Now I think Monoret has overtaken its number one spot so temporary lockdown while still very good against monoret not quite as powerful as it can be against a red white convoke so instead we're focusing a bit more on these spot removal spells that can also gain life and then a get lost also rounding out our removal section can also take care of larger threats and then of course Jada, one of the main payoffs for playing an angel deck, as it can make mana to cast our angel spells to help us ramp, and then can also give our angels additional plus one plus one counters. And then at three mana we're running the full set of Resplendent Angel, not the easiest creature to enable, but just making a single angel token can often win us the game. And between Lightning Helix, Steel Seraph giving our creatures a lifelink, and finally Archangel of Wrath, which we can doubly kick thanks to our multicolored lands like Cavern of Souls and Secluded Courtyard, we can easily gain that 5 life to maybe enable the angel and then of course we can also use the 6 man ability to give it plus 2 plus 2 and lifelink so that can also be another way to close out the game and then inspiring overseer not the most impactful angel but it does replace itself and gain a bit of life especially good with Janna as it will enter with some additional plus 1 counters and then also good in the more mid range and control matchups as it can at least replace itself while still being a threat and then we mentioned everything else and then Aurelia at the top of our curve as well, 5 mana for 4 Flying Vigilance Haste, can also maybe draw additional cards if multiple creatures are attacking, or in the case that 5 or more creatures are attacking, we also get kind of a free Lightning Helix to the opponent. And then a mana base, as we mentioned, has four copies of Inspiring Vantage. We also still have Battlefield Forge and Sundown Pass. Bivouac for an extra threat built into our lanes can also help close out games against control decks especially. And then I like one parlor to give us a bit of card selection early, since we don't have anything going on on turn one anyways. So playing a tap land and surveilling is good value. And then at the uh, Cavern of Souls to make our angels uncounterable is pretty important, as well as Secluded Courtyard, another way to maybe make black mana to doubly kick Archangel of Wrath. But we'd have to be careful not to play too many of these, since we still do need double white to cast cards like Temporary Lockdown. Lightning Helix requires red and white, and Cavern and Courtyard won't help cast it, so we do need to make sure we have enough author sources as well. So we still have four planes, and then Naiganjo can also be channeled to maybe take something out. So yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the draw with a keepable hand. Can't quite cast a Lightning Helix yet, but Jada into Resplendent Angel could be a decent start. And we are up against Monored. Okay, so really hoping to cast a Lightning Helix at some point. For now, Thalia could also be a good way to slow the opponent down. As we see Felden, not a great target for Lightning Helix, if we're being honest. And Parlor is next. So this can name Angel, but I think I'm leaning Thalia over Jada. Just at least if they have a removal spell, make them pay one more. Can technically hold off the etching of Kumano. And a strangle for two mana is gonna take care of it. Alright, take six. 
And Archangel could be played next turn. So I think for now then I'm looking at Resplendent Angel. Just to try and block Etching and Phoenix Chick. And then next turn we can tax their mana. Also if we draw a land for Lightning Helix I can still play Jada alongside it. Opponent with Chandra, Planeswalker. Yeah, that's pretty good here since I'm not easily going to be able to pressure it. Just a Felden attacking at least. And now Battlefield Forge allows me to either go Helix plus Jada or play Archangel. If I do go Jada plus Lightning Helix, we could maybe finish off Chandra, but then I don't have the best blocks on defense. So I think I'm better off going Archangel for now. And then can I afford to attack Chandra with Resplendent Angel? I don't think so. So pretty passive play here. Chandra keeps plussing, finds End of Festivities. So they still don't have the best attacks. They're gonna have to pay three. I guess um, we can trade away a Resplendent Angel here. Take three from Felden down to two. Next turn I can attack with Archangel and Chandra and finish it off with a Lightning Helix. So we'll be at five facing Felden and Phoenix Chick. So we're essentially at one, but I guess I also have a blocker in Jada. So it's not the best position to be in, but definitely have to block here, so... I think we don't block Felden. Ooh, double Lightning Helix. Okay. In that case, we have an answer to Felden for next turn, assuming we still prioritize Chandra. Could also just Helix Chandra and not attack, and let them plus it for another turn. But that feels kind of bad too. And I guess I'm also going to one here just from casting it since we have to use a pain land. So not a ideal situation by any means. You wanna dance? Then let's dance. But Chandra down. Jada probably has to chum block. No and we're drawing Overseer next, which is a fine draw. So Trump Felden, opponent could still draw into a Lightning Strike to finish this off. If I block Phoenix Chick, I'm dead to pretty much anything, including Kumano. Although, to be fair, if they had a burn spell, they could have just taken out Jada and attacked. I guess End of Festivities may be a reason to still block Felden here. So yeah, Kumano, End of Festivities, those are kind of the arguments for maybe trumping Felden. Yeah, I'll uh, block the Phoenix Chick. And then if we get to untap here, we should be in decent shape with four life gain coming up. All right, we get to untap, perfect. And now the clock's gonna be pretty fast thanks to the extra counters from Jada. And then I think I should Lightning Helix now, just so our opponent can't burn us in response, since they're unlikely to have a burn spell in hand right now, since uh, they would have just won otherwise. So then the question is, take out Felden or not? I think it's fine to do so. They could have another Felden in hand, which would also make sense. But now Overseer can block it. I guess they do get to dig three cards deep here. But if I block with Overseer, they get to dig four cards deep. If I just go face, what happens? Opponent's at 12, we have 7, 8, 9 in the air. Yeah, let's just take out Felden. Could have maybe waited until they attacked, but then we run into the situation where they can play with fire me in response to win the game. And they found a play with fire, so we're at three. So yeah, they can find a lightning strike to just win here. Put on bottoms, and I wouldn't be shocked to see another Felden. Alright, Kumano, we're at two. And Aurelia might just do it here, entering with three plus one counters, getting to attack right away and even draw a card. And yeah, there we have it. Awesome, on to the next one. 
Okay, we're on the draw with uh, Keeper. Turn on Delver. If this is a mono blue hot agent deck, we're glad to have Cavern of Souls to make our creatures uncounterable. Storm Chaser Drake, alright, that might be worth taking out before they can protect it. Could also just play Jada and ramp out some of our angels, which I also don't hate. Yeah, how much do we care about Storm Chaser Drake? If they can enchant it with like a Curious Obsession type effect to start drawing, that could be bad. If they also have a bounce spell for Jada. Yeah, maybe I'll just uh, Helix here. Not too worried about Delver of Secrets, even if it transforms. It reveals Assess Capture, so... Hiding the Cavern of Souls to have them maybe keep up a counterspell is pretty nice. And get lost the draw. So we can play Steel Seraph, still don't have to show them Cavern of Souls. And that can hold off Storm Chaser Drake technically. And then next turn I can double spell Jada get lost. Even though playing Jada first can give me more counters. We'll see if they have a Fading Hope, maybe. Alright, nothing end of turn. And an all-out attack. Interesting. So they have a pump spell of some variety. Might be an aura, giving an extra power. Yeah, there's not that many blue pump spells that increase power that I can think of right now. But maybe it's still better to uh, take it here. Alright, opponent's sitting on their essence capture. So this could be a good turn for Cavern, play Jada, keep up a get lost. Which uh, I'm not in a hurry to do right now. And then Vigilance versus Lifelink. Let's do Vigilance. And then I can maybe block Storm Chaser Drake with Get Lost Backup. And then of course if we can doubly kick Archangel to clear both creatures that would be awesome. But I'm sure they've got some way to interact. That opponent's gonna Essence Capture just to draw a card with the Storm Chaser Drake I guess. And get the counter. Sure. I'll let them untap since they still have a mana up for a protection spell. And then now if I want to use removal I should target the Aberration instead of Storm Chaser Drake so they can protect and draw a card in response. Combat Research, yeah that's a good one. So that will just let them draw a card essentially. Yeah I guess that happens. I can still trade for Steel Seraph if I really want to. Basically, I want him to be tapped out, and then we want to be able to Archangel of Wrath both creatures, ideally. We'll see what the response is. Alright, the Ascent, so that does increase power by one, so that one makes sense. Okay, so get lost in response before they draw, maybe flush out another pump effect. Alright, that worked. They still get to draw, so four cards in hand. But now they're pretty far behind on board. Hoping they just tap out for another small creature. Right, they're gonna grow with the Aberration instead. Still a 3-2. Can attack. And then second main Archangel of Wrath. I guess uh, untap effects could maybe get us. Nope, just a Wrestler. Shrinking down Steel Seraph, but now the coast is clear for Archangel of Wrath to take out both of their creatures. And that should be pretty much a game over. Still have a uh, Iganjo, which can also be an uncounterable removal spell in the main shop. Untap. Cast Overseer before attacking, maybe find something useful.
All right, get in there. And uh, what do we like? Maybe just a lifelink on Steel Seraph. Uh, they're gonna bounce it, that's fine. Can attack and still replay it, thanks to Jada. Our opponent's hanging in there, but feels like the type of deck that needs to be off to a good start and can't really catch up easily. All right, Ottawara now as well. And then next turn attack for 12 damage potentially. Still have Archangel for, for additional damage. But yeah, Cavern of Souls doing a lot of work. So showing why these mono blue decks have fallen off slightly in recent times. As a lot of creature decks are now uncounterable. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. And we've got a Keeper. Some good early removal. And then some... Hard-hitting angels. Well, let's see what we're up against. Could be a domain deck, so that's going to be a hard matchup since they can likely go over the top. All right, for now, play Steel Seraph. Opponent might just be on a Naya deck. Not sure which variety. Looks like a ramp deck. Alright, probably going for Overseer to try and hit my land drop for the turn. Which we did. And we'll maybe gain life. Vigilance could also be relevant if our opponent's running a Wandering Emperor, for instance. But they would likely wait to have us attack first so they don't lose it to the Overseer attacking it next turn. All right, opponent's going to keep on ramping with an Invasion of Zendikar. We can answer one large creature with a Get Lost, perhaps. For now, Archangel seems fine. Could also attack with a Bivouac if we're afraid of a board wipe, which also seems decent. And then, I guess Steel Seraph going for Lifelink again. Can put Counter on Overseer to diversify. And it's going to be an Itali. Well, if they don't find any flying creatures, we might be okay. Although our opponent's likely to find one in our deck. Finds Geshoth and Lightning Helix. Well, that was about the worst case scenario. Put him back up to 12. Geshoth can hit us to find more dinosaurs. Otherwise, we might have been able to attack and Helix for the win. But of course, most cards in our deck were going to be able to get in the way. But yeah, if they just found an Angel, I guess Get Lost deals with Angel. Attack for 6 and Helix for the win. And our opponent's just completely going off. Finding Carnosaur, Tyranax, Fight Rigging. So they're definitely an all-in deck, hoping to cheat some expensive dinos into play as soon as possible with Hammer Skull alongside Fight Rigging. And uh, I think we've reached the point of no return. So is there any chance here? Opponent does not have any reach creatures, but they have about a million damage on the ground. I can play Aurelia, hit them for seven. And then I guess if our opponent attacks with 5 creatures, Aurelia can gain us 3 life. Up to 23, probably not going to be enough. Could also get lost to Gishoth here, but then we're still in trouble. Archangel taxing them doesn't matter too much either. So I think my best hope is Aurelia attack all out. And then somehow hope not to die, so we can helix them on the crackback. But yeah, this is going to be more than enough coming through. Can jump a hammer skull to soak up the most damage. Still take 29 and another Tyranax. So yeah, that's plenty. But we will get to see Aurelia trigger at least. So that's kind of neat. Hits another Carnosaur. Our opponent's living the dream. I 
their average mana value must be above 5. So Aurelia does trigger. We do get to put them to 2. So kind of close, I guess, in a way. GG's. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. My hand is not perfect, but functional. Let's see what we're facing. Black whites. Still Seraph for good pickup, good at enabling Resplendent Angel. Our opponent Asper Colors seems to be the more controlling variant. Alright, do not have Cavern of Souls, sadly. Start with Steel Seraph, at least that one survives. Go for the throat. Our opponent with the Tide Binder to remove the ability. Fair enough. Well, Get Lost can eventually take care of it. For now, take three. Yeah, you'd be surprised at how many targets Tidebinder has in Standard. Actually one of the more played creatures in traditional Standard, even if you don't see it much in Best of One. For now, Archangel of Tithes might be the play, and then next turn I can double spell Resplendent with Get Lost. I don't think I attack with the Steel Seraph in case your opponent's sitting on a Wandering Emperor. Alright, Arti Resurrected instead. To counter Archangel. We get to draw. And there's Cavern of Souls, so that would make future creatures uncounterable at least. Pass it back. I think Steel Seraph is still worth preserving for the ability in the future. Especially with Resplendent Angel. And then Archangel of Wrath can also clean up both of their creatures potentially. So that's what we're maybe building towards. Even if our life total is going to take a bit of a hit. So, name Angel, play Resplendent, see what their response is. Could get lost Tide Binder now, so Steel Seraph kind of unlocks to be able to um, give itself lifelink. Then they might have another Tide Binder, which we're okay with. The only risk here is your opponent gets to maybe explore on Air Tie to grow it above to toughness. But we'll see if they have another Tide Binder. Otherwise, I'm happy to get in. I guess now Wandering Emperor is potentially a concern. Hmm. In which case, Vigilance might have been the pick. But let's say they do Wandering Emperor. Yeah, then next turn they also get to put a counter on Air Tie. So then Archangel has to pick either Emperor or Air Tie to remove. And things could get messy. Alright, let's be patient. Just pass. Opponent channels Abandon Mire. That's acceptable. Reveals. Interceptor. So that's a way of countering a spell without actually countering it, but opponent gets back Tide Binder anyways. Take three. And this is potentially our Archangel of Wrath turn. So we'll go to attackers, Steel Surf triggers, see if they Tide Binder. Um, I guess I want to represent being able to activate Resplendent Angel too. So we can do that. And then could give Resplendent Angel Vigilance, attack, activate. But then they would just counter the Resplendent Angel trigger. So maybe it's still just Steel Seraph targeting itself. Going for Vigilance, and then now I can attack with maybe just a Steel Seraph. We can play it slow. Opponent's at 17, and I can just play another Resplendent, keep up, get lost. And then next turn maybe Archangel with double Resplendent to go off. Because as long as Steel Seraph gives one of our creatures lifelink, with a 4 extra life gain from Archangel, we can make two Angel tokens end of turn, which 
should be good enough, assuming they are not running any board wipes. So Resplendent resolves. And three steps ahead to copy Ertai. Yeah, let's just take that out in response. Their opponent's got a lot of map tokens now. And I guess our opponent did not get to do anything with three steps ahead since it only had one target. So it fizzled the entire spell. Okay, well, this is our Archangel of Wrath turn, basically. Or we can just activate Resplendent Angel, have them use Tidebinder. Let's just go to Attackers and take it from there. And then maybe Resplendent Angel itself gaining a lifelink. Alright, they had a Niganjo. That works. Unless we activate Resplendent Angel in response. In which case our opponent will play Tidebinder to counter the trigger. So then we end up with no life gained. Opponent takes 6. And then next turn I could die if they animate Anchorage. 5, 6, 7, 8. They would need to find a non-land card on top. And then, um, yeah, basically attack me for 8 exactly, versus letting this happen, going for Archangel, which is two separate triggers. They get Tidebinder the Archangel, so it no longer has lifelink, so I don't gain any life, so then Resplendent doesn't go off. Or I can just pump this Resplendent. So, yeah, there's a lot of options. Tidebinder complicates matters a little bit. I think I'm better off just pumping this Resplendence and have them respond with Tidebinder, so I don't lose the other one. But there is a small risk that we just die if they get lucky on the Explorers. So that happens. And then another Steel Seraph I can take. Alright, we'll see if they go for lethal here, if they see it. So no land on top right away it would be bad. Alright, that's a land. They can still get there if the next one's an on-land. It's a land, alright. Well, we got pretty lucky here. So now they don't have enough, even if they activate Anchorage. Another land. Well, our opponent got a bit unlucky. Now we should be in a pretty dominant position if we get to make an angel token and we'll be able to gain that life right back. But yeah, maybe unnecessarily risky. Our opponent's fully tapped out, so we've got a lot of ways to do this. Again, lifelink, attack, make a token, end of turn. So that should pretty much wrap it up. Could have also considered only kicking once, so I had the mana to play another Steel Seraph, but that might be overextending a tad into a board wipe. Still have Bivouac as well we can activate. So quite a few options. Stoic Sphinx in hand can also be a powerful finisher if you can build around it properly. Seems like our opponent may have disconnected here, which is a shame, because it was a very close and interesting game up until the very end. And uh, now we can just go to Attackers, give our Angel token lifelink. This game also showcasing why playing an off-meta deck can have its advantages. Because it turns out our opponent never had a Wandering Emperor, we missed out on that attack with our 3-3 three, three flying lifelink, otherwise we definitely would have been safe from the attack on that last turn. Alright, and our opponent explodes. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and uh, 
can't quite cast any of my spells at the moment. So I think this will be a mulligan. This is better. One Jada could go. And then if we're up against a very aggressive deck, we might put a Lockdown to use before playing Jada. Land number four, probably not super useful if I'm not going to cast any four mana angels yet. And we are up against a red aggro. So, yeah, I think the plan's going to be maybe get lost here. And then try and set up lockdown. Although, of course, if we lock down, I guess uh, that would take care of whatever two drop they play as well. So we'll see. Slick shots just cast. Yeah, lockdown looks good. Can take two for now and keep the get lost for later, even though a lockdown's also a nice way to clean up all the map tokens. And then next turn we can play Jada, keep up get lost, and then maybe use the mana from Jada to cast Archangel with Kicker. Alright, point's gonna go digging, finding Monstrous Rage and Slick Shot. So we've got that one covered. And Ronan can pack in for two. So we'll stick to the plan. And we could even fully kick the Archangel thanks to Secluded Courtyard making black mana. Happy to block, force the Monstrous Rage and then get lost. Alright, Point's just gonna cast it now. No downside to letting that happen first. All right, get in for two first. And then doubly kicked Archangel of Wrath, gaining us four life. And the plus one counter also doesn't hurt. Still have a Lightning Helix left, so if we draw a Resplendent Angel, we can immediately enable it by gaining five total. All right, opponent with a very nice answer here, Scorching Shot, one of the new additions. And a play with fire, so yeah, those were two perfect answers. Although we got lucky to draw Aurelia. And not every deck is going to be packing Scorching Shot. Might still see Witch Doctor Frenzy has an answer to Shieldred, but since Shieldred has kind of fallen off in popularity, most people aren't too worried about needing to deal five damage exactly. Highway robbery can uh, sack a land to draw. Our opponent's in control mode, which you don't often see the red deck in. Felden can hit for two. Don't want to give them any unnecessary cards when we're trying to close out the game. Now sacking a land looks a lot worse when they have to pay the Archangel tax. One mana for each attacking creature while it's untapped. And we have lethal in the air. Not even counting our Lightning Helix. The more mana they spend pumping Felden, the less mana they have to attack. So even another Scorching Shot's not going to be good enough. Alright, explore once again. Find a mountain. And our opponent explodes. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. This hand's a little slow, not doing anything till turn 3. Steel Seraph can be a way to eventually enable Resplendent Angel, but we'll need another way to gain life as well. So on the play I might have kept this on the draw. In today's standard, I don't think we can keep. This is much better. So we have a pretty great hand, but I do have to get rid of one card. Resplendent Angel, pretty great with Archangel Wrath. Revelry could be pretty important to catch up if we're up against aggro, but it is potentially a bad card if we're up against a more controlling deck. So could see getting rid of Revelry, and then Jada into Archangel could still be a powerful curve against aggro. Let's try it. We would also need to take one damage of Battlefield Forge to cast a Revelry in the first place. And yeah, against Golgari midrange, I'm happy with my choice. Although, this is going to be a tough matchup if our opponent's packing some good removal. 
and turn two Bronco can already start accumulating value. So we'll play Jada. And uh, maybe wait a turn on Archangel so we can kick it to take out the Bronco. And then for now Resplendent would also enter with a counter, but shoot to Sheriff will clear a path. Bronco attacks and reveals a land, so they get to draw a card for free. Okay, a Resplendent Angel is next. If our opponent can just keep removing my creatures one by one while drawing extra cards with Bronco, that's kind of the nightmare situation. And that's exactly what's happening. Our opponent can now saddle the Bronco, still revealing a land. Yeah, I mean, I gotta try and stop this in some way. Play a 3-4 flyer. And uh, hope to top deck something exciting. Shieldreds, that's a good one. So we might have stopped the Bronco from attacking for now. And we get to surveil at least. Definitely don't need more lanes. And uh, I'll hang back. So we can try and block the Bronco once again. Shield Road can keep attacking, so we're super far behind here. Our hand hasn't really developed. Frill back. Just to gain some life. Nope, just a 3-3. Three, three. Good enough to saddle the Bronco. And finds another land. Right, let's take that out. And Preacher's next. Alright, that's another land off the top, so... Not sure how many lands we drew in a row, but we haven't drawn a single spell this game. Still can't attack, but now we're just dying to these Death Touch creatures attacking us. They can fire up Restless Cottage as well. And that might be game over. If we block Frill back, we're at 11, so we still die. But yeah, if I jump, I'm also not winning, so good game. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw with a hand that can certainly beat up on aggro. May not be all that great elsewhere, but I'll give it a shot. Caves of Koilos and Skrelv. So black-white, maybe Asper Legends, who knows. And there we see the Asper Colors, Danik is next. Okay, so Lockdown's looking good. For now we can Revelry, although because our opponent is at 18, even if I take one of Battlefield Forge I wouldn't be gaining any life. So it would just be to make some 1-1 tokens, which at this point is not all that exciting when we're about to cast Lockdown. So I guess we'll just pass. And then I may not do anything this turn. Right, Thalia is going to complicate matters a little bit. So that's going to make Lockdown cost 4 mana. Don't have land 4 yet. So I could Helix Skrelv before Thalia comes down. And then next turn I can Helix Thalia herself at the very least. Yeah, I mean, I could just be patient, take some damage, hope to hit my land drops and then Lockdown. But then if our opponent gets a Rafine going, we're going to end up taking a lot of damage from it. So I don't hate this plan. And now Revelry also looks a lot better. So I could cast it to make some 1-1s one and gain 4. And that buys us time to set up the lockdown. Sure. And then make sure to pay a life to Battlefield Forge so we can gain 4, even though our opponent could technically tap the caves. I don't think the game is going to hold priority for them. Ratadrabic is interesting, can eventually helix it, but with the Thalia attacks... That's going to cost 5 mana with Ward as well. So I guess for now I'll just jump if the plan is to lock down next turn anyway. Could also play an Archangel of Tithes first. 
which can also hold off the smaller creatures, as well as Ratadrabic. But yeah, I also don't hate the idea of just lockdown, deal with Thali and Denik, and then next turn maybe Helix, Ratadrabic, if they tap the plaza of heroes. Yeah, let's lock down. Because if I do go for Archangel of Tithes, our opponent could have maybe a channel lane to still keep attacking and cheaply answer my one creature. So that could potentially snowball out of hand. Opponent channels Abandon Mire to cheaply get back Thalia. And they've got the land to play it. We see Iganjo as well, so yeah, plenty of channel lands to go around. So now once again, I don't have the mana to take out Ratadrabic. So we'll go for Archangel, and then next turn I can maybe Helix their 3-3. Uh, three, three. But yeah, so far the ability is not too scary. Opponent's got another Denik. And Odawara channeled for one mana, so yeah, exactly what we described earlier. But they're only getting in for five. So this is my wind of opportunity to take out Ratadrabic, so we don't have to worry about it. I think that's reasonable. And then we should be able to beat a couple two drops with our four and five mana angels. Steel Seraph could also come in handy. So for now I could play a Horelia attack and have it back on defense. We could Archangel of Wrath just to damage Thalia. They can maybe protect with Plaza, but no one really cares. Well, let's go with Aurelia, since we have a backup in case they have a removal spell. So far, so good. Bonus still attacking. Could imply that they top decked another Iganjo, since they would have been able to use it when I attacked last turn. Yeah, I guess it's fine to flush that out. And I'm pretty happy if they make a 3-2, since that's another creature that might die to Archangel of Wrath. Alright, opponent just had another Denik. So we can doubly kick Archangel of Wrath now, but I think I'm going to wait to take out their Pious Apparition with it too. And then for now we could play a 6-mana Steel Seraph. Giving Aurelia a lifelink. So yeah, Pious Apparition would play right into our Archangel, which we've set up pretty nicely here. Let's make it happen. Take out both creatures, and that's going to be enough for a concession. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with a solid hand. Do need a second white source to actually cast a lockdown. Which is why lands like Courtyard and Cavern can still have drawbacks. Even though they're great for the deck. Facing red aggro. Alright, I'll try an early Jada here. See if they answer it. If they don't, maybe just cast an Archangel next turn with an extra counter. A 4-5 flying lifelink should be pretty good. So is there a play with fire? Nope, just a, a rage. Hit us for 5, I'll take it. And get in for 2. And play Archangel. Next turn we can play another one with Kicker. To maybe take out the Etching of Kumano. And we'll see if our opponent has a way to deal 5 damage. Or maybe pump up one of their creatures here to trade another Rage on the Swiss Spear. Yeah, we can just take 5. And a Cell Sword to trade for Archangel. Fair enough. Opponent gets a Detective. So that was a nice sequence, but we're still in great shape here. Just attack for two, play another Archangel. And 
and take out etching. Take two. I guess I could die to had they had some cheaper pump spells and another cell sword, so in that case blocking with Archangel is a little safer. But now we just get to gain four each turn. And I guess I can always play another Jada actually to pick up additional counters. So we'll try this. Tab Jada, play Overseer. And uh Maybe play another Jada just to have it on defense. And pick up more counters. Okay. Now I'm definitely blocking. But yeah, last turn had they gone like Rage plus Monstrous Rage and then Cell Sword, I could have died. So that was maybe a reason to still block. Now I can certainly block since we have another Jada. And then a bivouac can maybe attack if we draw another white source to enable it. All right, opponent's able to trample over, put us to six. Did not draw the land for bivouac. So while I can activate it, it's gonna be tapped. So just go for Jada then. Attack, back up to ten. And yeah, that should be game next turn. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, and... Uh, yeah, this hand is a little risky in the sense that we're missing white mana to cast Get Lost and Revelry. But Jada, if it survives, can still help play Steel Seraph. I'll give it a shot. And of course, a lot of our lands will produce white mana. Facing black white. Okay. So turn to Jada. Let's see if the opponent has a cutdown. They do not. Still unclear if they're on a more mid rangey or controlling deck, or if they might be black white life gain with cards like Amalia. Mirex points in the more controlling direction. Touch the Spirit Realm. I could destroy with Get Lost eventually. Although for now I don't have the white mana to cast it, so Steel Seraph it is. And a Deep Cavern Bat can maybe take away the Get Lost now. Although Archangel of Wrath could also be an answer to it. So they might take that one instead. Alright, Get Lost is gone. Just wanna draw white mana, basically. And now Caustic Bronco, so they might be on a combo deck with a Shadow of Mortality. Alright, found a replacement Jada. And for now, can give Steel Seraph Vigilance, maybe. So they cannot saddle the Bronco and cast Avarice to stack the top of their deck this turn. And at 21, we should be relatively safe. Right, it's going to be Fortune next. It's another mount. So they might have some synergies with those. I guess touch the Spirit Realm and Fortune both ways of flickering creatures. So they might also be playing into that theme. Alright, Gix will deal three to us, but we get to take out the Bronco. And an uncastable Lightning Helix. Alright, so our mana's not quite cooperating. I think I still go for Vigilance to have multiple blockers back for Fortune as well. And just send Steel Seraph. Or I can send Overseer since I can still double block Fortune. Sure. And I don't see Deep Cavern Bat attacking by itself. Yeah, opponents get their own Steel Seraph. Also makes sense with all the flicker effects since you can upgrade your prototype into its larger form. So that's maybe what they're setting up with Fortune here. So we could double block, lose Jada in the process. 
Jada's pretty useful at casting my angels. So I don't think I take the trade. So maybe attacking with Overseer was a mistake. But the more angels we have, the more plus one counters we'll get, so we'll be able to compete with the opponent's Steel Seraph. Archangel of Tithes, not bad either. So yeah, we'll cast that one and wait until we can kick Archangel of Wrath. And then no attacks for now. Alright, another touch the Spirit Realm to deal with Archangel. So really hoping for an untapped land so we can kick Archangel, take care of Deep Cavern Bats, get our Get Lost back, and then we should be okay. Now I wouldn't mind double blocking Fortune if they offer, or we can, I guess, double block Steel Seraph. That one would lose two of our Angels, so then Jada loses some effectiveness. But trading Overseer for Fortune might be okay. Another Jada. Well, this is not going to plan. I mean, at this point, I'm pretty far from casting a Lightning Helix too, since I need both red and white mana. I can always cast another Jada just so it enters with some plus one counters on it. Or I can be satisfied with a large Archangel, even if it doesn't take out the bat. Yeah, I mean, I guess with double Aurelia coming up, that might be all right. And a 5-6 lines up pretty well against a 5-4. We've been able to keep Gix in check so they can just uh, draw cards at will. Although now Peacekeeper can make our Aurelia cost two more. So I wouldn't be able to cast much of anything. No goes for Lightning Helix instead. Maybe they don't realize how far away we are from actually casting it. Okay, so next up Archangel gains Vigilance, can attack. Not really interested in casting the Sunset Revelry. Could have gained me four life beforehand, but maybe if we save it for later it can actually draw us a card. All right, opponent does double block, so we get to take out both creatures. And with a Battlefield Forge we can actually cast Get Lost, even at instant speed, to uh, get back one of our Angels. And there's Gix. And those are Peacekeeper and one attack, so they must have some other instant speed answer here. Or they didn't see this line. Alright, that worked, and our opponent explodes. Alright, so we got to see this new build of red-white angels in action. Sadly, didn't get to face the red-white tokens deck, since I would have loved to see how Archangel of Tithes lines up, but you can imagine it being pretty effective if the opponent needs to attack with a whole bunch of small tokens to get past it. And then, as we saw, the mono-red matchup is also quite winnable, with cards like Lightning Helix being a great help, and then, of course, we still have Temporary Lockdown, and eventually Archangel of Wrath, an amazing way to stabilize. And then, with all these flying creatures, a card like Slick Shot will also have a harder time attacking past him. So the popular aggro matchups should be winnable, but this deck is of course going to struggle a bit more against control, since we have a lot of expensive creatures that don't always have an immediate impact when we play them, so cheap removal and board wipes are going to be pretty difficult to get through, especially since our deck doesn't have a lot of built-in card advantage, so we're really just hoping for maybe a Resplendent Angel to go unchecked, find our Cavern of Souls to beat counter spells, and then of course with a Resplendent Angel activating, we can maybe still build an army of angels, even if it's the only actual creature we play. So yeah, that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day.